खामाने 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 इट्स टाइम फॉर द शो ओह my thing up okay my thing up oop hello oop hello just waiting for my guests hello 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 you guys welcome to crowns i'm just waiting for my guests waiting for my guests to come in running a little late today i had to get an oil change to 6 foot 6 it's one of our guests today hello hello make sure you hit the box whenever you're ready i'm just giving it a couple minutes how is everybody today happy thursday friday eve Big Friday Eve, not the little one. When you won't see me, when you won't see me. Thank you for the scarecrow. You guys, this is our last recording, and I hate that I'm in my car. <laughs> But this is our last one, and then we get to be featured. I'm sending in shots over. Um, I'm doing headshots on Saturday, so. We're in here. We are here. We have made it and it would not have been possible without you guys. So I thank you guys for all of your love and support um through this featured season that I've been going through. So I appreciate you guys. Can you guys hear me well? That's what I'm worried about. If you can hear me. When you won't see me, when you won't see me. stuck in my head I'm in South London this evening my baby hairs I don't got no gel or nothing out here <laughs> but that's the that's the beauty of being um a host you got to be able to do it whenever wherever whenever it's your 6 for 6 whenever you're ready you can hit the box I'm just waiting for Sara Sara E If you guys didn't know you're here at Crown. This is my baby. This is my show. Um I am your host Queen Lala. I am working on getting my show featured. Um and hopefully it will be next week. <laughs> But um until then, we're here and we're talking about confidence. Um I feel that I am probably one of the most confident women that you will ever meet um I'm also probably one of the most confident big girls that you'll ever know um I grew up as a fat kid um and lost a lot of weight in and when I lost that weight I lost a lot of confidence in myself um when I gained the weight back was when I was able to feel like my best authentic self again. It was the the best version of me. Um and I have never been better since then. So, um from from my confidence, a lot of people um I have found were surprised by my confidence and how much confidence I do have, um especially as a heavier set woman. and um came up with this idea with my with my good sister um faith faith the heck and um and we decided to that I that I should birth a show about confidence and about what makes you feel like your most authentic and best self um for me it's my nails it's my nails for me so um my nails make me feel my most confident self when i have my nails done i feel confident 
my, as you can see today, I'm a little, I'm a little disheveled, <laughs> but I still feel beautiful and I still feel worthy of love. And I still feel, thank you. And I still feel amazing about myself. I still love myself and I'm still, I still hold my head up high. Even if I, even when I have the bonnet on, okay. Cause I have the bonnet on, even with the bonnet on, I feel like my most best self because my nails are done. So today I'm going to talk to my guests and we're going to see where their confidence comes from. And I encourage you guys to stick around and see. We got Sarah E in here today. Sarah E, she is the host of the uh, Dutch and Spiel. <laughs> I always, I know I'm not saying it right, but she is, um, thank you. She is, um, she's a, a featured show host as well. Um, she's a featured show host as well. I'm on. And, um, and I have Mr. I have Mr. Six Foot Six. Um, he's here. He's probably one of the most confident men that I've met so far. Um, and we're gonna talk about um, we're gonna talk about where he gets his confidence from. So, ooh, fireflies! How cute! That was beautiful. Um, ooh, it's again. Um, so, <laughs> with that being said, yes, Sarah E, hit the box whenever you're ready, sis. Um, so, with that being said. We also got some crown formations for you this afternoon. Um, so stick around for those crown formations, some affirmations for you guys to get yourself through. Cheers to get you through your week. Um, and it's Friday or it's a uh, Friday Eve, good old Thursday. So you guys, one more day and it's the weekend. Okay. Hang on tight. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and welcome in my first guest. Like I said, she is a featured show host herself. She's Boyka Sadoich. And um, she has a show making fun of us not being able to spoil a see. So uh, let's, get, let's get my guest in here, Sarah E. Hi, love. <laughs> Spoika Sadoich. Y'all, I just, you know, um, laugh with you guys when y'all on my show. Just you see, she laughs with us, not at us. Although I, when I'm on and I'm watching, I'm laughing at you respectfully. <laughs> yes, and I'm on this Saturday, guys. I'm gonna be cheating with my translation, <laughs> with my translation keyboard. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat, so I'm gonna win. <laughs> well, actually, Sarah, she uh, she told me that even if I do cheat, it's not necessarily that I'm gonna win because of that evil wheel that she has. So, <laughs> but you guys, um, Sarah, thank you so much for coming. Um, please introduce yourself to the people. Let them know who you are. Let them know about your streaming. Uh, I'm Sarah E. I stream Monday to Friday in the morning um, around 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, weekends is open in. I have my show, feature show every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, if anybody wanna be in the show, message me. You gotta spark us to Deutsch. <laughs> you, gotta, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta pick which word means what, it, what the English word is. You gotta say, you got to pick the German word for it. It's a lot of fun. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, and it's a, I can't wait to be on it this Saturday at 5 p.m. So, Sarah E., take two. Take two and in the car again. Take two. <laughs> um, please tell the wonderful people um, about your confidence. Tell them where that came from. Um, after I started loving myself, basically, 
and then I gained some confidence. It took me a while to get there, but here we are. Long here we are. I love that. Um, when you said you had to, you had to um, love yourself. Um, tell me about that process. What led you to believe that you didn't love yourself? Um, I, I was, was a big girl, never been skinny, never going to be skinny. I accepted that fact that that's a part of loving myself, loving my body. Right. Um, but when I was back in school, kids, teenagers, they're always, they can be mean. Um, so yeah, I believe what they said, what they told me. Yeah. Kids are mean. <laughs> you um, you want to be a part of the cool kids and right. So, yes. um, and if you don't, your confidence is like, oh, I'm not worth it. I'm not, you know, and since, but when I was in high school, being thick or being a bigger girl was not a thing, right? That was just, right. you had to be like this um, to be in the cool kids section. And um, yeah, I've never been. So I've never been into the, I was more like the, everybody knew me, but not in a good way. Like they didn't have nothing good to say. I'm sorry to hear that. Because of your weight, right? Because hmm? of your weight. Yes. Yeah. Kids are mean. Um, same thing for me. Um, you you grow up being a big girl. For me, that's the same, it's the same thing as as myself. I, I grew up big and then I got I lost weight. I got small and I lost my confidence when I got small. And so I gained the weight back and I've, I've felt great. So, um, what, what did you have to do to gain, um, your self-love? Do you remember any, any, um, like, um, like, like, uh, epiphanies, like sudden, sudden idea that you had to love you? Um, I think it came from, um, when I met the right people too like I, I've actually met some friends that are really friends that did they don't care how you look like or you know what you wear whatsoever because that was a thing too if you didn't have the news clothes on um just then um there was not a not a thing to be in there um but I met the right uh people like for my friends I met my best friend and um she actually supported me too like are you not that I mean I was bigger I lost a lot of weight too um that i recently gained again a little bit but we're working on that yes (laughs) me too me too um my friends um helped me a lot through that like to being confident to to actually build my confidence to actually go out or i never had um wearing a shirt like a um like a um top i never had it on because of my arms because i thought my arms are too big my my back is too my butt is too big you know everything too big so but um or shorts in the summertime it could be like 100 degrees out in, uh, i was in jeans long jeans and everything long sweating um that changed Shh, tinker sorry my dog tinker Um, yeah, so, and my friends really pushed me to that point to say, hey, you can wear other clothes too. You don't need to sweat or tinker pill. <laughs> you guys, welcome to Crown. This is, this is my show on confidence right now. I'm talking with Sarah E about her confidence and how she had to find self-love before she found confidence in her support system. So your support system, your friends were like, hey, you don't have to, you don't have to cover it all up. Right. Like you, yeah. you're pretty, like you can wear stuff. It doesn't matter if you're big or not. Just cause you're big, it doesn't mean you have to wear a long sleeve um, all year round or, or stuff like going to the pool. I never went to the pool. Never. I was afraid to go to the pool oh, wow. because of my weight, right? But all that changed, the older I got, the more it changed, the less I cared about it. Like I, 
one thing is too like I don't care as much as what people think about me, how I look, how I talk. If you don't like how I talk or how I look, move on. You don't have to look at me. You don't have to talk to me. And I think that's a that's a big um, part of it too. Because back then, when I wasn't so confident, um, I was worried about what people think about me. Why they're mad at me? Why why they don't speak to me? You know. But that all that changed. So now it's easy. It's definitely something that I've that I've heard a lot of is that you had to you had to let go of um, people people have to let go of what other people think about them in order to gain their confidence. You have to stop thinking about what others think of you. You have to only care about what you think of you. Right. Yeah. I found I find that that I find that to be true. I love that. So I wanted to know. Um, thank you so much for sharing your story. I wanted to know um, who is your confidence uh, like idol? Who is the person that you look up to um, for their confidence and try to maybe model your own confidence after? Like for me, it's Nicki Minaj. I really try to be a bad B like Nicki Minaj. Is there somebody that you find... Um, you try to mimic their confidence. Um, I always thought uh, Lizzo, cause she, cause she is, she is uh, a big girl. She lost a lot of weight too. Okay. Um, but I always thought, like the first time I thought I uh, seen her, I was like, she, she uh, got some confidence to walk around like that. I would never, <laughs> you know. But seeing her and how happy she is, cause I, I saw the the um, some on YouTube, you know, where they interviewed her and yes. I was like, oh, okay. Maybe right. I can be there one day. Right. <laughs> I mean, I am, but not like that. <laughs> Listen, okay. See, there's, there's confidence and then there's like that overconfidence, that like overcompensating confidence. And I don't think that she's overcompensating, but she has like pristine confidence she's got the cheeks out she doesn't mind it she doesn't she loves herself i love that um uh, so i want to know um what does it look like for you what does it look like for you um oh no that's not the question the question is sorry if you had to speak to that teenage Sarah or that little Sarah, what would you tell her to make her feel um, the confidence that you feel now? So that maybe the confidence, um, the confidence journey would be a little shorter. Um, I definitely would tell her it will get better. <laughs> definitely, it will get better. Um, and don't worry about what other people think. Right. I love that. Like, don't worry about what other people think, and it will get better. The older I think, the older the get, you uh, you more the more it gets, it changes. Like you don't, um, people don't. They they still do it. They look for you. You know how you look, but it's not that bad anymore as a teenager. Like there's more like your uh, personality is is a part of that too. If you uh, um, if they find you pretty or beautiful whatever word there is for it yeah if they find you attractive yeah i think that i think that's great advice for for little you and i want to know too of course what do you have for the people what testimony do you have for the people um that are trying to be at your level of confidence if they're looking up to you as an idol of confidence what testimony do you have for them trying to find their confidence at this time um really just trying to love yourself i think that's the biggest part like not just um don't listen to what other people say just trying to um to love yourself there there are steps to it like you cannot just like if you cannot look in the mirror and and don't see something pretty about yourself there's always something you find pretty even i when i have bad days and i look in the mirror it's like mm. but then I, I look at i find something that i like just for that day right and that helps a lot just find one little thing that you 
love about yourself and then add more to it every single day. I love that. You guys, make sure you are hitting Sarah E with a favorite at this time. And welcome to Crowned if you're just coming on in. We have spoke with Sarah E at this time. She told us that her confidence comes from um, self-love, self-love and a beautiful support system that was able to um, shake her out of that dark saboteur place. Um, and she would like to tell little, little Sarah that she needs to stop listening to others and she wants you to love yourself to get the confidence that she has sarah thank you so much for coming today do you have any events coming up um or anything that you want to plug at this time um well besides my show i'll be my show of course saturday 5 p.m eastern deutsches radespiel you be will be on it um Monday, deutsches radespiel or Easier. Yes, game. It's probably easier. Uh, Monday, I'll be on Smurfy's show. Uh, do you know? Uh, that's pretty fun. I love that's that a lot show. Of fun. Uh, Me too. <laughs> and then October 20th, I'll be in Some About Mary's Battle Royale. Who? Uh, Some About Mary. Something About Mary's Battle Royale? Ooh, you guys. Make sure you favor Sarah and go show her some love at her Battle Royale October 22nd, you said? No, 20. 20th. You, got, you guys make sure you go and visit her at that time. Sarah, thank you so much for coming today. I really do appreciate you, and I would love to have you back anytime. Thank you, love. I appreciate it. Thank you I'll for having me. Saturday. Yes, thank you. See you Saturday. Bye. Bye. You guys, isn't she so wonderful? I love Sarah. She makes my day. Anytime I see her face, she makes my day. She's so smart. She's so smart. And sometimes people, they don't be listening because I feel like people hear an accent and they're like, meh, if it's not a British accent. And listen, that's a smart lady right there. You guys make sure you favor her. She's in the she sent me a rose and the love bear. Thank you guys so much for the love and support today. Thank you for the gifts ahead of time. Hello. Welcome to Crowned. This is my feet. This is going to be my featured show <laughs> Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Every Thursday, I'm here and I'm talking about confidence. We talked to Sarah E. She is absolutely wonderful. Make sure you're favoriting her. You guys also make sure you're favoriting the top three of my stream. Um, again, I wouldn't be here without the the top three. So um, without without the love and support. So make sure you are um, favoriting the gifters, favoriting the um, the red badges. Okay, okay. So um, I had my affirmations for today. Um, they are posted <laughs> on Instagram. And I don't have my second device. But what I will tell you is the affirmations that I use today were you are worthy, you are worth it, and to have grace. I will have grace with myself. I do love me. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of respect. And I know it. Those are my personal affirmations from today. Um, I didn't get any viewer affirmations this week, but I also didn't post about it. So that's on me. <laughs> but I'll have you guys, uh, you guys' viewer um, affirmations next week right here in this in this spot in between the interviews, okay? So make sure that you guys are um, following me on IG so that you can see my story and you can send me your affirmations so that I can feature your affirmations right here. <laughs> um, at this time, I would like to welcome in my next guest, um, Mr. Six Foot Six. This man is a beautiful chocolate man. <laughs> and um, I love talking to him. He, um, I met him in, um, oh my goodness. I can't think of his name right now. Craft Mac. I was I met him in Craft Mac's live, and he 
he blew me out of the water where I was like, I gotta have him. I gotta have him, I gotta have him, I gotta have him. So without further or ado, thank you guys for the gifts. Without further ado, you guys welcome in Mr. Six Foot Six. Not the little one. <laughs> big Six Foot Six. <laughs> yeah, Big Six Foot Six. How you feeling? Y'all see him? Y'all see him? Make sure you favorite him right now, not later. If you don't have him faves, you don't have me faves, disrespectful. Hi. <laughs> How, are How are you? I was trying I'm to be well. cute for you today, and I look a mess. So excuse no, me, just look at the nails. She's pretty in the nails. <laughs> She's pretty in her pretty. You are pretty as you are. I love it. How you feel? Thank you. I appreciate you. For all those that don't know who you are, please inform them who you are. Tell them about your streaming. Ooh. Um, <laughs> uh, for those who don't know who I am, uh, right. I am Mr. <laughs> I am Mr. Six Foot Six. I've been on the app um, probably about four or five years now. I've been streaming about two and a half, going on three. Um, been a been a lot of a lot of streaming, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of relationship building, a lot of networking, a lot of mm -hmm. topic streams, a lot of heated yes. conversations. So yes. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed <laughs> the platform for what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, awesome. Well, we're very glad to have you. Um, you are probably one of the smartest men that I've met in a long time. Um, so I really appreciate you coming on the show today to share with the people about your confidence so i'm gonna jump right into it and let's get into the into the nitty gritty please tell the people how you got your confidence how did you get here how has this point never been better um so for me yo like being young uh growing up in the church having to get up there in front of the church and sing in the choir having fifth Sundays where the youth takes over. So you got to get up here and do the welcome and you got to get up right. here. And, 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 and um, uh, we shoot, we had to preach one Sunday for, for some of us. So have our own little sermon, you know, so uh, that started it. <clears throat> then um, just, you know, coming from a single parent household, um, not really having anyone that really kind of like guide me. So I kind of had to throw myself out there into stuff. Um, which then led to me being a salesman uh, coming out of high school. You know what I'm saying? So being around people, um, always having to kind of walk up to the person and say, hey, what can I do for you? Uh, there's no, there, you can't be shy in sales. So I think that um, having some really dope sales coaches, um, a lot of dope teachers kind of pulled um, that confidence out of me. Do you still get nervous when you do a sale? Hi. Um, so in sales, no, that is by far, I feel like my wheelhouse. Um, I've been doing it now whew, 15 plus years. So mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those situations where for me, like talking to people about product services, stuff like that is just, there's no, Second there's nothing nature. about that. Yeah. It's nothing about it that makes me nervous. Uh, I think I get nervous more when, um, there's a serious conversation and things need to get done and we need to get mm -hmm. to a solution. And I have to stand before a number of people who want the solution and then try to, you know, give my, um, my perspective as to how we can get there. Uh, that can be sometimes kind of nerve wracking because we all have our own experiences, our own perspectives. Um, so for you to bring your individuality and, you know, share it amongst people, it's not a sale at that point. If anything, it's it's you know who you are. So that comes yeah, with a little more, you know, tension. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yes. Hi, TSA family. You guys, welcome in. If you're just joining us, I'm talking with Mr. Six Foot Six. We're here on Crowns Thursdays at 1 p.m. Right now we're talking about Mr. Six Foot Six's confidence came from immediately in the church, having to be able to just go and approach people and talk to them uh, happily. <laughs> I did that too, Mr. Six Foot Six. If you um, believe it or not, I did a sermon. It's the only one I've ever done. <laughs> I did not like it on the three H's on heaven, hell, and the Holy Spirit. And oh, I remember that. I remember that really, 
really well because it was it was kind of a defining moment for me but I was like this is not it <laughs> I'm not a preacher <laughs> I have my own testimony but I am not a preacher um so I want to know um what did it look like before you had your confidence what or even what are those times like now as an adult where you um have the saboteur that's just talking in your ear and letting you know that you can't do it lying to you letting you know that you can't do it and you're not worthy and you are not special like what what happens for you what does that look like um so i think we all have that little kid that we may have you know locked in a room or um um tied up somewhere you know and we don't let them out we don't we don't right. let that, we don't expose that kid because we know that there's a lot of vulnerability in that um <clears throat> for me um it's it's kind of a putting yourself out there, fighting it, no matter what it is, you can't really shy away from what needs to be done. You can't shy away from uh, what has to get done as far as like handling businesses. Uh, I mean, handling business, um, like when COVID came, uh, new new jobs, new um, outlooks on life, just moving different, everything is different. So as a man, I think, there's a certain level of confidence that you have to have in leading a family, leading a, um, being a father, being a, um, even a leader of men. You know, I got homies who, you know, would hit me just, you know, trying to see what I'm doing right now in my career um, because they may want it to have transitioned, you know? So we all as men have those times where life happens. So now your confidence has to shine. You have to step up in it because you know, there's someone looking up at you, there's someone depending on you, um, in most cases to, you know, not waver, not falter, not um, let, you know, the times or the tests or trials or whatever it is, keep you from still exuding that confidence that everything is going to be okay. So it's, it can be tough. Um, but for me, I, I pray. Uh, for me, uh, I have what I call buddy love. If you've ever seen Professor Clump, the, the, the um, nutty professor, how yes. buddy love used to kind of expose himself sometimes. And buddy said stuff that Mr. Clump really didn't want to say. And yes. I think that's, that's, there's a, he, he inside of me sometimes plays with my confidence, boosts my confidence, taints my confidence. But ultimately I won't let anything stop me from making the move whether I'm confident in it or not, I know the step has to be made. I know um, the move has to be made. So we do what needs to be done. Um, whether it's going to have people looking at me crazy, talking about me, it doesn't matter. Um, right. Showing up every day, getting the job done, um, uh, staying steadfast, like that I think for me, even when you don't have the confidence, it helps build confidence because when task is complete, Damn, I did that. I ain't even think I could do that. I did that. You know, so now, you, now in the next situation, that confidence is just a little bit, you know, you bad yes. a little bit with it this time. So it's it's yes. just, you know, pushing yourself through it and just knowing that even when you're not that confident, your confidence is your confidence is building. Just um, you gotta keep moving. I love that. Um it sounds like you find your confidence in responsibility as long as you have something that you're responsible for and you get it you get it done and you get it done efficiently then you feel your best confidence is that is that uh good to say very much so accurate is that yes, accurate to say yes <laughs> that's the word i was looking for accurate to say i love that um i want to know um, I hear you talking a lot about your faith. Do you feel that um, you had to find your confidence in your faith as well? Did you have to separate differences, or could they could they coexist? Um. So when I, I'm, I yes, I'm big on like purpose. I'm big on vision. I'm big on 
you're being led by something. Um, yes. So for me, again, in my life, the way I grew up, you know, I try not to push my beliefs on others. But when it comes to me speaking directly about my life, I know the car wreck I once got, the, 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 the situation where I, I literally should be gone from here, but I'm still here. Like there's just been a coverage on my life that can't nobody tell me nothing about, you know? And that, knowing that you have that behind you, um, kind of like, you know, the song, I had a praying grandmother. I mean, it's yeah. that, you know, that, that sometimes is enough to push you. That's the confidence you needed. That's the, the hearing in your head, you can do it, baby, from your grandmama. It's um, ancestors, angels, uh, God, universe, all of it for me. I'm big on the secret. I'm big on the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to keep positive energy, positive um, um, things happening to you, you have to stay positive. And I think yeah. that, that that ties into spirituality, that ties into your confidence. Uh, faith and confidence, I think, are somewhat the same. Because yeah. if I have faith, then why am I worrying? If I'm confident, then why am I worrying? If I know mm -hmm. I can get it done, why am I worrying? If I know somebody's mm -hmm. backing me and pushing me, and, and all I got to do is, is just say, Lord, help me. Like, it's it's if that's enough, then that's all the confidence I need to get it done. You know what I'm saying? So you just have to put yourself in a, a mental space of I can do it mm -hmm. and then go do it, you know? So um, I think a lot of people through lack of confidence, put themselves in a debilitating stifling stage of mm -hmm. can't move. And now you're stuck. And it's not that you never could do it. You just never lifted your hand to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's the mental breaking down of self and, I think that can tear and it can it can work on your spirit it can it can um taint your spirit i i just I, th I think you have to have faith in order to build confidence because that faith is strong and if you have it then there's nothing to question therefore it leads you to being a confident person in your faith knowing that you can move mountains with a mustard seed you know you just hey. you, you gotta tap in I love that so much. You guys, make sure you're favoriting Mr. Six Foot Six right now. What an insightful man, okay? Um, and welcome to Crowns. This is my soon-to-be featured show. We're here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. We have talked to Mr. Six Foot Six about his confidence and how he gains it in the church and, um, and responsibility. As long as... Um, he is following through with his responsibility mm -hmm. and taking mm -hmm. no phone calls and um, taking full responsibility for his actions then um, and working hard for um, his responsibilities, then he feels his most confident self. Um, faith work without works is dead. I agree, Don. Thank you so much for that. Um, Mr. Six for Six, I want to know um little <coughs> six so little three foot six <laughs> little little five foot zero <laughs> i can't imagine you okay, okay. being a baby six foot six um but little little baby you that's a wild wow. so, I, I, I know it <laughs> oh, i need you to talk to three foot six six foot six right, 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 and right. i want to know what you would tell him in order to be his most best authentic confident self in that church at the on them pews on them sundays <laughs> where he didn't feel like he was handsome enough i want to know what you would tell him right now <laughs> No, that's three foot so, six. So I, I I can't help but see this this picture of me with big buck teeth. Like my 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 head grew into my teeth, y'all. I had the biggest gap back in the day. So um if I was talking to that kid, man, um <clears throat> that kid was always he was caught up in fresh prints, he was caught up in different world, he was caught up in living color. He was caught up in um, living single. Um, 
uh, Good Times and Sanford and Son and 227. Mm, yes. He, he, where he got his substance, where he, because he didn't have a father in the house. You know, his mom's was working two jobs, trying to make sure we were straight, you know, and I was complaining about them bugle boy pants. And just, so for me, I wasn't confident because I had the bare minimum. And, right. you know, me being an adult to realize that my mother did everything she could to make sure I had quality stuff, even though it wasn't the Nautica and the Jordan and the Nike and the Polo. And I didn't look like Justin Bray. I look like Chris. And, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, damn, it's crazy now, you know, looking back at that kid who was, who was, he didn't have a guy, like he was just confused, but he soaked, he was a sponge. He soaked up everything. Mm. Um, I would tell him to, dang, yo, that's tough. Um, ah. I would, I would tell him, I, I think for me, there's always been this question of, can I do it? Mm. To me, just like when you asked me when it came to the sales, like it's now second nature. Like I feel like I'm I'm one of the best salesmen on this planet. That's just what it is when it comes to my my craft. Selling water to a whale, huh? There you go, right? But it's it's that that took cultivating. Um, mm -hmm. I would have told my younger self to cultivate that with my education. English mm. was there, math was there, but there were other parts of the education that I didn't really care for. So I didn't I didn't. I wasn't confident in social studies. I wasn't confident in science, those terms and those dates, they were daunting for me. So yeah. it led me not to have been as scholastically excellent as I could have been. And that then tainted my now life and where I could be, where I should be. I should have that master's. I should have that bachelor's. I should, that there's certain levels in life I could have made it to had I been a lot more confident. Mm -hmm. um, in studying, in being alone, in not being with the crowd, uh, not trying to fit in. Um, it, there's very little confidence in being alone and not being the cool kid and, and mm -hmm. being the one they talk about, you know, in, in, in middle school. Like there's that, that, that kills your confidence. But um, I guess to sum it up, the one main thing he should know at three foot six, you gonna be six foot six one day. <laughs> Just, just stay you, learn all you can and know that there's a whole wealth of confidence that's going to come with them other three feet you ain't got yet. I'm trying to tell you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, little three foot six. He would be so far in life. I love it. Right. Uh, I think that six foot six is doing great. Uh, after everything that three foot six has gone through. So uh, I, I appreciate you um, talking to him. Have you, that now out of curiosity, it's just out of curiosity for myself. Have you done your shadow work? Have you, have you healed your inner child? Ooh. Ooh, I knew it. You got to do your shadow work, friend, because you are way too bright. You are way too intelligent to not heal him, he mm -hmm. is allowed to be healed. Mm -hmm. A person, human, I'm human, Captain Hook. Thank you so much for asking. Um, you you got to heal him. Have you not, have you started it? I have. Um, okay, good. It, it, there, there's there's so much unpacking, man. Um, yeah, I think that's why I lean so hev like so heavily on my faith, just because when the dark when the room was dark when there was no one there like because of what was instilled in me as a child like that's who i was talking to you know it was god and when i didn't have an answer it's crazy how it came to me the next day um when i didn't know what to do it's crazy how what to do was already laid out and the, the doors were just open all i had to do was walk the room like can't nobody tell me god doesn't exist because it's just yes. been situations that have <laughs> shown me uh, he does. So <clears throat> I think for me think now, the last parts of that young man that are, are hidden are the ones that are tied to my son. Um, generational curses are very much so real. Mm, um, generational curses. My pops not being able to be a father to me 
has now mm-hmm. trickled down to me not being able to be the father I want to be to my son. Mm-hmm. And there's some triggers and traumas from my childhood that I can't really um, uncover. Cover. Okay. Because I felt like that was something, you know, as bad as it may sound, you know, that my son could have helped me deal with. Mm. Uh, my son could have been a um, a teacher for me oh. as to, you know, what maybe my pop went through or what maybe mm. it, it just it's things that I thought and, and when I said mother of my child would be my wife, um, mm. when I said I would not be out here having children out of wedlock, like mm. I meant that. And for me to have failed one time with that, I felt was enough. I hate failure. And um, that kid, that part of me, I, I just, I, I still kind of have buried because I'm still as a man trying to master going and getting my son and making sure he doesn't go 35 years, never knowing who I am. You know, it's mm. it's crazy. It's crazy. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I hope that you do your shadow work and you do heal that inner child. I will be honest with you. It can be a little bit re-traumatizing. So if you have gone through some traumatic things, I do encourage you to have a, a counselor on standby that you can speak to once you're doing that full deep shadow work. <clears throat> but I can tell you from my own testimony, um, just call it the spirit, if you will, um, it, it will, it will take you to higher places. It will make you a higher, uh, a more elevated, a more high frequency human when you decide to heal him, when you do decide to allow <clears throat> six foot, six foot or three foot six to be six foot six, when you do allow him to, to, to have that, um, that happiness, that joy, um, and allow him to be the inner child that he is and, 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 and feed him the things that he deserved, you'll, you'll feel a lot better. I really appreciate you for opening up about that. Um, my last question for you before we get on out of here is, um, oh, excuse me, I have two more. Um, what are some affirmations that you have used to become a more confident man? Um, so craft is dope, you know, craft, craft Mac yes. actually, um, he, he gave me a, um, a selection, um, from Ace Hood's album that, you know, I've been listening to, um, but as, as far as me, like ones that I've kind of used to kind of keep me going, um, mm-hmm. my mother always said, yo, like when you walk out this door, you've been trained. Um, she also told me that, <clears throat> you know, no matter what you do, you you do your best to be excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do my best to try to be excellent in everything. Um, and that comes with the confidence, even when you suck at something, even when you've never done something. You have to be a certain level of excellent. So that 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 makes you be confident in all the things that you are great at. Well, my communication mm-hmm. skills are great. Um, the way I love and care for people is great. And I think in most cases, those two things walking into any situation will get you through the situation. Because there's mm-hmm. people who will back you, people who will fight with you, who will teach you, who will show you, who will do it with you. Um, so, uh, be excellent. Um, there's a level of training that comes within the household. And when you walk out into the world, you can exude excellence. People can say, who, who your mama now? Where you came from? <laughs> comes from you being different. Um, yeah. so be excellent. Know when you leave the house, you've been trained. And if not, go home and do some training because, um, I don't like the way other cultures, I don't like how in some lights, um, the people who look like me don't get a fair shot just because of persona, the way we come off, the way we express ourselves, our 
vernacular, the slang, the the swag. It's intimidating. If you're going to be you, be the best you. Be excellent yeah. at you. And I think that will kind of start to change the narrative of us being anything less than excellent. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate you. You guys, make sure you're hitting Mr. Six Foot Six with a favorite right now. And I mean right now. Mr. Six Foot Six, do you have anything coming up that you would like to plug? Um, So I, I off the app, yeah, you know, I'm working on this acting thing. I'm trying to be the next TV dad. So um, we're nearing the end of the showcase. I got a red carpet event coming up in February. I will be, wow. um, for anybody who wants to meet Mr. Six, I will be um, putting some tickets out there for people who are going to be in the city and want to come through and, and, and support. Um, but I got a monologue. What city is that? Atlanta. Atlanta, you guys. Okay. I got a monologue that I got to get down packed because we, I just got word that on Sunday we, 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 we finna start the recording and the breakdown Ooh. process. Um, getting this stuff ready for the agents so they can shoot. Congratulations. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited. For I can see it. The next TV dad, I can see it. I can see it. So I uh, I speak it into existence. Know it. Speak it from your crown. I know I'm the next TV dad. I know I'm the next TV dad. I believe I'm the next TV dad. The world deserves for me to be the next TV dad. You say it from your crown chakra. I love that, Mr. Six Foot Six. You guys, again, make sure you're hitting him with a favorite right now. Oh, when do you stream? When do you stream? Uh, um, so normally this new schedule will work. Um, I'm off, you know, most days by seven. So I'm normally on from 7.30, 8 o'clock to about 10, 11, 12, just depending on the night, the conversation, how deep everything is. So you can catch me most evenings um, on the weekends. You can catch me anytime. So just tap in. I do have a podcast. If you've never tapped into it, six, the number, feet, F-E-E-T, deeper on um, Spotify podcast. Um, you'll pull me up. I got about eight, nine, ten episodes on there. So tap mm -hmm. in, man. You might you might enjoy what you hear. And his streams are, are very similar as well. Very, very insightful, very <sighs> intelligent streams. So you guys make sure you're favoriting him and get you some some good brain food over there with Mr. Six Foot Six. Thank you so much. I'll never kick you out the box, but thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Bye. You guys, that's the end of the show. I appreciate you all for coming today. It is time for time to sing with Travel Bay. So make sure that you favorite her. She is my number one She's my number one gifter, and it is time for time to sing. We're going to go over there. We're going to listen to some, some people uh, try to find lyrics, find lyrics for, their, uh, for their, their words, and it's a really great time, you guys. <clears throat> my crown formations for this week have been that you are strong, you are kind, you are worth it. You deserve love. You are worthy of love. And you can do it if you put your mind to it. I thank you guys so much for coming to here today. This has been Crowns with Queen Lala. We're here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. Make sure you smash that star next to my name if you haven't already. Please favorite the top three of the stream. That's my, my top badge, your top badge, big top badge energy, travel. Bay TSA, big TSA pull up, big TSA Thursdays. I got number two, Mr. Six Foot Six himself. And of course, number three, my bestie Sparky. Thank you guys again. And I will see you guys next Thursday on Crowned. And make sure that you come out Friday, tomorrow, tomorrow. I have an auction. It's a Pink Friday auction. I'm going to be Nicki Minaj. It's going to be bomb. That's 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, Pink Friday. I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next week. Mwah. Bye.